Healthy food that tastes good. Healthy food that tastes good. Wouldn't it be great if you've been diagnosed with prediabetes, if you could prevent diabetes and reverse prediabetes altogether just simply eating healthy food that tastes good. Healthy food that tastes good. Hey there, I am Dr. Topher Fox, endocrinologist in Superior, Colorado. And today we are talking about part three in our three-part series about sustainable, healthy nutrition for you that will work for you to be able to prevent diabetes and reverse prediabetes all together. So if you missed part one, the four goals for every healthy eating plan or part two, the five rules for every healthy eating plan, go back and check those out. Today, we are talking about the five steps, five steps that you can use to build a sustainable plan that will work for you over the long term. And this is really important. You know, this is really important, not just so that you don't have to join one of the cults or camps that's out there in the nutrition world, the keto camp or the plant-based vegan camp, not just so that you don't have to join one of these cults or camps, not just so that you don't need to make sweeping changes. You can make small incremental changes and those will add up over time to get you results. But also, and most importantly, because this will help you step-by-step -step build a sustainable plan that's gonna work for you over the short term and be sustainable over the long term so that you can get the results that you desire and deserve for your health. So as we dive in, let me just dive into these five rules. We'll go through them today. Like I say, if you missed the four goals and, uh, sorry, if you missed the four goals and five rules, go check those out. We're going to dive right into uh, the five steps. And so step number one, step number one is to eat sufficient protein. We know that sufficient protein does two main things. One is it helps to maintain muscle mass. All of us tend to lose muscle mass as we get older, a problem that's particularly troublesome after menopause, and that eating sufficient protein helps us maintain our muscle mass, one of two very important steps that will do that. And number two, we know that eating a higher protein content, so think about 20% of your calories or perhaps a little bit more uh, from protein, that when you eat that much protein, it helps you to feel full for longer. And so it can help you achieve your weight loss, specifically your fat loss goals. And so think about uh, quality protein with every meal, 20 to 30 grams, roughly 60 to 100 grams uh, per day for most people. Step number two is to make sure you are eating sufficient fiber. Average American eats about 16 grams. We know that ideally we all probably should be up into the 30 grams or higher. And fiber also does two very important things. Number one is it helps to limit the uh, spike that happens in your blood sugar uh, after meals. I guess three important things. Number two is it also tends to be filling, kind of like protein. When you eat more fiber, you tend to feel more full. And number three is we know that fiber is an important fuel for the healthy bacteria that live in our gut, our so-called microbiome, and getting enough quality fiber is helpful to make sure that those uh, bacteria, those good bacteria are thriving. One word of question is to make sure that you're not increasing your fiber too quickly. That can create some abdominal discomfort, nausea, bloating, gas, diarrhea. We don't want that. So if you're at 16 grams, you know, think about adding a few grams per week till you get up there into the 30s. So that was rule number two. Rule number three is we want to elevate food quality. We know that three ingredients, added sugar, refined grains, commercial oils have added about 500 calories to our nutrition through time. And so in a very general sense, we want to get more of the healthy things into our nutrition. We want to elevate food quality. We want to get the unhealthy things out, specifically focusing on those three ingredients. The other way to get more healthy things in there is to focus on rule number four, which is to make sure that you're eating sufficient vegetables and fruits. So think up out six to eight servings per day as a target. Again, you don't have to get there all in one fell swoop. If you're at one serving per day, See what you can do to get up to two or three on average and then work up from there. But we know vegetables and fruits have all these little small molecules. They go by names like polyphenols, phytochemicals, carotenoids, flavonoids. There are these little small molecules that help us fight inflammation. They help us regulate blood sugar. They help our immune systems be good, help us produce energy, help us uh, just be at our uh, best, regulate blood sugar, fight cancer, immune system. I think I said all these things. Uh, so uh, sorry for that. We want 
want to eat sufficient vegetables and fruits, six or eight servings per day is a great target to shoot for. And then step number five, my personal favorite, the one that is most understood and most neglected if you have prediabetes is you need to eat within your carbohydrate tolerance. What the heck does that mean? You need to eat within your carbohydrate tolerance. What we know is that all of us can consume a certain amount of carbohydrate before we spike our blood sugar abnormally high. And this amount tends to decrease over time as we get older, as we lose muscle, as we gain fat, as we become more sedentary, but it is reversible. So how do you know how to eat within your carbohydrate tolerance? Most of the time, what we do is what we call an empiric approach, which is a fancy way of saying we take an educated guess. For most people, if you can consume somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 30 grams of carbohydrate per meal, that will hopefully be a limitation that keeps you from having your blood sugar spike abnormally high. We can get some feedback on this by measuring this test result called the A1C, and if your A1C is coming down, you are likely on the right track. Now, the problem with that is we don't get that feedback very quickly. It takes a little bit of time. So the other way that we can do things is we can actually measure it. You can measure it by checking your blood sugar, poking your finger and checking your blood sugar on a little drop of blood, knowing that ideally, well, normal, it would be below 142 hours after a meal. And we can measure it two hours after a meal, ideally keeping it at least below 160 to 180 uh, would be a great target to shoot for or a tool that is really powerful and probably underused is something called CGM or continuous glucose monitoring. In our programs, we try to get this into the hands of most people if they are interested and willing. It's a little device that you can wear on your arm. Freestyle Libre would be the one that we use the most commonly that can actually let you see your blood sugar uh, basically on a continuous basis over two weeks every time you purchase one of these sensors which will hook up to a little device or to your phone and allow you to record your blood sugar continuously. It's a great tool for being able to understand your own personal physiology and what is going on inside your body. And so you can limit your carbohydrates to within your carbohydrate tolerance. And then ideally over time, there are steps that you can take to actually improve your carbohydrate tolerance so that you can eat more of the healthy carbohydrates without having your blood sugar spike abnormally high. And so this can really be uh, used to leverage your results, to speed up your results so that you are getting where you want faster and easier. So again, five steps for every healthy eating plan, steps that you can take. And you can really focus on any one of these five at a given time, but make sure that you are eating sufficient protein, eating sufficient fiber, elevating food quality, eating sufficient fruits and vegetables, and then eating within your carbohydrate tolerance. So hey, if this training resonates with you, if you wanna learn more about carbohydrate tolerance and how to use these tools, if you are a uh, postmenopausal woman who has been diagnosed with prediabetes, you have special needs, you have unique needs, and we have a program that is built just for you and the challenges that you are facing, whether it's low muscle mass, whether it's emotional challenge, trying to figure out what you're gonna do with this next chapter of your life, whether it's challenges like gosh, uh, hot flashes are keeping you up at night and you're not getting adequate sleep. Whatever the challenges are, we have a program that is built just for you. It's called Reversing Prediabetes. You can find it at reversingprediabetes.com, which will actually link you over to our membership site, drtopherfox.com slash membership. Uh, you can find the link up there or down there. Your first month, $1.00. $1. You can check us out for a full month for just $1 to see if this program is a good fit for you. We have a great community. We have live training every week. We have recorded training that takes you through a step-by-step -step action plan so you get the results that you want. Reversing prediabetes all together, preventing diabetes, being at your best so you can be the hero in your own life. You can show up in the way that you want for your friends, your family. So again, reversingprediabetes.com is the easiest way to link to that site. Check out the link up there, down there, click it, enter some information. You can get started right now for just $1. I really hope to see you on the inside. And hey, thanks for listening to this three-part series. Until we meet again, Dr. Topher Fox signing out. Wish you peace. Take care.